Madam President, uh, I rise to really comment about some wonderful men in the Senate that are retiring on both sides of the aisle. Earlier today, I spoke about my deep affection and sorry to see go friends Olympia Snow and Kay Bailey Hutchinson. But you know, I really want to rise as the Dean of the Women to just say some very special things about very special men on both sides of the aisle. I'd like, because when I came, um, it was only Nancy Cassabaum and myself, and yet we worked on so many issues together, and there are really wonderful men here that supported me, supported our issues, but really stood up for their states uh, and their communities. I wanted to say a goodbye to my aloha, to my very good friend, Danny Akaka, a wonderful man that I served with in both the House and the Senate. He's been a real advocate, not only for the people of Hawaii, but wow, the way he stood up for federal workforce, the civil servants who do such a great job, the outstanding job that he's done on the Veterans Committee. Lives are better off, particularly for our veterans. And I want to say a wonderful, wonderful goodbye and good hug to him, because he demonstrates that you don't have to be loud to be powerful. I also would like to pay tribute to someone on the other side of the aisle, my very good friend and someone I admire tremendously, Senator Dick Luger from Indiana. Who doesn't admire Senator Luger, a gentleman, a scholar, I might even add a Rhodes Scholar, a definite advocate for Indiana, a very, uh, an incredible thought leader on foreign policy. I'm so proud of him and the work he did and the way he reached across the aisle to work with our colleague, Senator Sam Nunn, on their famous Nunn-Luger Cooperative Threat Reduction Program. They truly worked together to begin to end the threat of weapons of mass destruction in the former Soviet Union and made the world a better and safer place. We want to wish Senator Luger a fond farewell and know that he will be deeply, deeply missed. I certainly will. I valued his thought, his counsel, his observation, particularly in the area of foreign policy, and he taught me a little bit about foreign policy, too. I also want to say a good bye to our friend Jeff Bingaman of New Mexico, someone who's always brought intellectual rigor, a lawyer's insistence on thoroughness, and a real commitment to people. It's been an honor and a pleasure to work with him on the Help Committee, especially on the Affordable Care Act. I was proud to support him in all that he did, particularly in developing and focusing on the health workforce for the future. I knew I could count on Jeff in the committee and on the floor as one of those men that I refer to as the Galahads, where men of quality always supported we women as we sought equality. Our initiatives to end discrimination against women in the health in the healthcare and in the workplace were some of our proudest achievements in working together. I also would like to comment about John Kyle. I've worked across the aisle from John Kyle, and I've been seated across the table from him at everything from Bible study group to the Senate Intelligence Committee. With, we studied the words of the Bible together to make ourselves better, and we worked in our committees to make the world better. We lived through September 11th and the terrible attack that occurred in our country and the anthrax attacks in our offices. With his steady leadership, his resourceful mind, his can-do know-how, we were worked together to get a job done. I was delighted to be able to work to him in a way that called forth our highest and better selves to look out for our country, and I wish him the best in his journey. I'd like to comment, too, about Ken Conrad. Wow, what a numbers guy. Those charts. I really love those charts. But we have many other things in common beside a love of charts. We love baseball. We love the Baltimore Orioles. And Madam Chair, I might add an occasional polka at Bob's Beer Garden in Maryland. Now, you know Kent. He looks like Clark Kent. And he is a superman when it comes to the budget. But wow, when they rolled out the barrel, uh, he was quite a hoofer. Most of all, what 
I admired about him is the way he breathed life into the numbers. He not only wanted a more frugal government, but he was also passionate and compassionate about how we could use the power of the purse to improve the world and at the same time maintain sensible spending standards. I'm going to look forward to seeing him with or without his charts and maybe in a dugout. I'd also like to say goodbye to Ben Nelson of Nebraska, a brother appropriator. We salute him for his work and for the people of Nebraska and the nation. Using those committee assignments on appropriations, agriculture, and armed services. He looked out for rural communities, and he stood up for men and women in the military. I knew he took it as a personal responsibility, the issues around personnel for our military, that they had the right pay, the right equipment, and we protected their benefits. An another comment about Herb Cole, another brother appropriator, the very essence of civility, who brought a businessman savvy with a deep compassion and commitment to the people of Wisconsin. Now, we all know Co the Cole family. They own basketball teams. They own department stores. He, I tell you, that Herb, he understood retail whether it was in politics, fighting for the people and their day-to-day -day needs, or the national policy of looking out for working families as they build their lives. He stood up for Wisconsin Cheese, the Green Bay Packers, his, the basketball team, but most of all, he stood up for the people. With Herb, what a sense of honor. His handshake was always good, and you could count on him. It was a binding, binding contract. I'd like to also say a word about Senator Scott Brown. I've heard many of you know that I was a social worker and a child abuse worker. And I want to say personally, I so admire Senator Brown's candor and forthcoming when he shared with the world his own child abuse experience in his book, Against All Odds. He not only explained the terrible thing that had happened to him, but he went on to talk about how he handled this terrible tragedy. And I must say, and I compliment him, that it was a model for that as a young boy that this terrible event would not hold him back. I am sure that his powerful words helped many others come into the light. And as a former child abuse social worker, I'm going to thank him publicly for what he's done not only in this institution, but to help other boys and even girls who faced a terrible tragedy and refused to be a victim, but went on to do something. And I wish him well. To Senator Jeb Webb, Senate's own Marine and former Secretary of the Navy. I've known him for more than 20 years, since he was Secretary of the Navy under Ronald Reagan. Well, in the beginning, we fought on many issues, particularly gender equality. When Senator Webb was a new Secretary of the Navy and I was a new United States Senator, we had a different view on where women should be in the military, and we duked it out. But you know what? Over the years, we came to know each other, respect each other, and appreciate each other's views. And I so appreciate the fact that he is an unabashed, unrelenting, fierce fighter for our men and women in uniform, fighting for them when they're on their front lines and when they return to the phone front here. I'm so proud of the fact that I could vote for his 21st century GI Bill for those serving in the military to make sure that when they're in the front line over there, they get the education here so they won't be on the unemployment line. Some of our most significant, his bill was the most significant legislation for veterans since World War II. So I say to Senator, uh, Senator Webb, Semper Fi, and God bless you. Then to my good friend, Joe Lieberman. My friend, Joe, a true independent. We've worked together on issues related to the Middle East and the safety and security of Israel. And we work to bring character education into our schools because we do believe that character counts. Working with Joe, whether it was to help create national service, move national legislation, or to say that in our schools we should come to understand the need to teach respect, responsibility, fairness, and caring in citizenship. Well, these were values that should be in, not only in our schools, but in, throughout our country. 
Joe has been so faithful to his religious beliefs. He's also been faithful to the Constitution he was sworn to uphold and to the people of Connecticut. And I want him to know we so appreciate his service to Connecticut and to the country. Madam President, I wanted to be sure that the day would not end without I acknowledged these wonderful, wonderful people who have given a big part of their lives uh, to making this country uh, a better place. So I really want to, in the most heartfelt way, I'm so sorry we didn't have a bipartisan dinner or party to be able to express this. I would have liked to have been in a, the same room, breaking bread with them, uh, in order to be able to tell them how much we appreciated them across party lines, uh, across those lines that ordinarily divide us. They came from different parts of the country. They arrived in the Senate with different objectives. They will leave under different circumstances. But I want to, again, let them know that each and every one of them had a positive impact on me and I think a wonderful impact uh, on the future of this country. So uh, we wish them well. Uh, God bless and Godspeed. And Madam President, I yield the floor and note the absence of a quorum.